Hello. <laughs> I am away on my Ollie Bobs, don't know if you can tell from the previous content. Wait, I don't know when this is gonna go up. Either way, I'm on my Ollie Bobs. Can you tell by the glass of champagne constantly in my hand for the last three days? I'm loving it. We've gone to a spa. A spa. Vlog coming soon or maybe already here. So the other day, we need to do like a pre-story pre prelude. I'm not gonna pretend like I know what that word means. Basically, I went to Valencia the other day for the YouTube Creator Summit and it was the coolest thing I've ever done in my life, by the way. And while I was out there, I was making so many friends. And this one guy said to me, he was like, you would be so great on a podcast because you can just chat beans about any topic for as long as you want and you won't shut up. And it sparked an idea in my in my little sausage brain. What if I, what if I did that? Like, what if I made a podcast? What if I just did that? But like I'm scared because that's like a lot of extra work and I'm already like so dedicated to the true crime chan that I don't think I could take on another project. But I can do a second channel video that's a bit like a podcast. So that's what this is. Surprise! Spoiler alert, that's what this is. Um, it's probably not going to be cut as much as my usual vids. So I'm going to do my makeup. Um, and chat some beans and I hope you enjoy this. Let me know what you think to this style of video. If you like it, I can do more. Um, I could even bring in guests. Podcast guests. Okay. I'm always scared of wetting my beauty blenders when I've got rings on, so I'm scared I'm just gonna like slice it open. Like a, an awake operation, poor thing's not even under anaesthetic. Oh yeah, I'm wearing joggers and a dress. Who said that I can't wear my joggers with my dress? That was a banger. That was a banger. Oh my God, and you know what else is a banger? Demi Lovato's new album. Sensational. Right, okay, so what do I want my first topic to be? Oh, okay, let me, let me talk about my break because I know so many people have been asking about it and I just haven't really known when or where to talk about it. And like at the time I felt like I couldn't really talk about it, so. I'll fill you in basically. If you didn't notice, over the summer I had like a few months off of social media as a whole, like not even just YouTube, but it started with YouTube and I was going to stay active on Instagram and Twitter, but then when it came to it, I like I, I was just like, I just, I just need time away from it all. Basically, the reason being my mental health. I have always had quite turbulent mental health like since my teenage years and I've been managing it really well for like the past few years. No, I haven't. That's actually such a lie. <laughs> I've not been managing it well. Um, but I've... Uh, I don't know how to word this because I don't really want to say too much online because obviously it's really personal. So I'm going to have to try and figure out how to word this. Basically, I had... Oh, I went through a breakup. Fine, f*** it. I went through a breakup. Do not fear. Even though I look like this, I'm rather hungover. But I wanted to interject at a later date because podcast Eleanor was not really saying what she meant at this bit. And I just, I want to just, I want to help her out. So basically, for a little timeline, I went through a breakup earlier in the year. Um, and then like I was dealing with it fine. I was dealing with the breakup fine. And then it got to summer and I had just a completely separate mental health blip just uh, in my own life. And the reason that the breakup intertwines into this is because when I was in that relationship, whenever I would have a mental health blip, that person would help me through it. That was my support system. And so now when I had this blip in summer, I no longer had that person to help me through it. So kind of that's why summer was especially hard. It wasn't because of the breakup. It was because I was going through my first mental health blip kind of all alone, um, which was really good in the end. It means I've like come out of it and I now know how to deal with things like that on my own, but I didn't at the time, which is why it was such a hard thing for me to go through. It was like my first time ever navigating those feelings all alone it was it was hard oh my god I, oh my god i really need to like do a skincare routine anyway back to podcast eleanor like not having that support system has made me build my own support system it's been really really healthy long term um but yeah it was just kind of like my first it was it was my first mental health blip without having my boyfriend there so it was it was harder um but i'm over it now and i think by the next blip i'll be I'll be fine because I've, I've managed to solve the last one, you know? And that's the sh thing about mental illness and stuff like that, especially anxiety, is that you have to put yourself through it in order to, to 
to fix it and to get better like with anxiety i i suffered really badly with anxiety like in college and school and if i could give like one piece of advice to myself back then it's just try and push through it just try like i know it's so hard but just try because that is the main way that you're gonna get better is through exposure to the thing that's making you anxious if if you're the same kind of anxious that i was i mean i I can't give that advice to every single person suffering with anxiety because it'll probably be different but for me anyway it was like if I'd have just faced my fears a bit quicker then I would have got to this confident state much sooner but that being said I believe that everything happens for a reason um if I'd never again choked on my spit embarrassing <laughs> yeah I had really really bad anxiety in college uh to the point where I had to drop out because I just I just couldn't get myself through those doors without having a panic attack. So I, I had to drop out of college. Um, and I, I was so gutted at the time because I really wanted to work in psychology. I, I would have loved to have worked with criminals. Can you tell? <laughs> um, I'm, so I'm really, really glad and lucky and grateful that I've managed to make a career still within that topic, you know, but without having to have all the like police training and so I couldn't go to college anymore. Do you think I've got ADHD? I think I've got ADHD. The way I like bounce around topics and then like circle back 10 minutes later. Anyway, I couldn't go to college. So that's when I started my YouTube channel because it's not like I couldn't just go to college. I also couldn't go out and see my friends. I was too anxious. There was points where I couldn't even go to my own grandma's house because I was so anxious about just like leaving my own house. It was so debilitating. Yeah, I just needed something to get me out of bed every day. And I was so into like makeup YouTube at the time. Oh, hate to admit it. You guys saw my old background. If you've been around on the True Crime channel for a while, you've seen the Jeffree Star lipsticks behind me. None of them are still in my possession. I I just needed something to get me out of bed every day which sounds so sad but like it, that's so true like I actually needed a reason to get out of bed every day um and so I made it uh well at first I made it makeup I didn't immediately start doing YouTube videos I just got out of bed every day and did some like crazy makeup look and trust me there was so sh it was <laughs> I'm so glad she stopped doing that because that's so embarrassing <laughs> anyway um yeah, I just started doing like mad little makeup looks. Um, I say mad, they're definitely not mad by today's standards, but like for like my friend group standards, like I was always the one with like bright eyeshadow and you know. Um, so yeah, I started doing just my makeup every day and I was watching so much makeup YouTube and I loved it so much that I was like, I might as well try that. I'm already doing my makeup every day, I might as well film it. So then I filmed my first ever YouTube video was a makeup tutorial with the Anastasia Beverly Hills Modern Renaissance palette. And I gave you three lip options. One of them was like, uh, one of them was like a metallic lip. Oh my God. I'm so glad that era's over. Um, yeah. And then I started doing makeup vids. And then here we are today. I ended up implementing true crime onto my channel at some point because I was just like, I was just doing whatever content I, enjoyed making so that was like makeup vids i used to do vlogs i used to do playlist videos where i took you through my playlist that could never happen these days with the copyright strikey system you know but anyway that was really fun i yeah i just used to do like so many different like types of vids and true crime was one of them that was something that really interested me so i, I started doing like my first ever true crime video it was on a missing persons case of a of a little girl named Antoinette Cayadita. And I don't know if the video is still on my channel, not the first ever one, but I remember I redid that case a few years later because my true crime videos were toxic in the beginning, like genuinely. Um, so I'm, I'm glad I've got like the team helping me and stuff now. I mean, I, I think I got all right at it by myself, but now we've got the team, it's just like, it's class. We're, we're a proper cool little team. Oh, I should do a video where I like introduce you to all the team. Shall I do, shall I do some quick introductions now? Oh my god, sorry, I swear we'll get back to what I was talking about in a sec. But, so, let's start out with the editor of this channel. This is Jake, say hi. Who else do we have? Editor of the True Crime channel and also channel manager, this is Jack Hodgson. We have Adam Zaden, who is just, like, my pet. I don't know, how do we describe Ab Adam Zaden? Abum Um, and then we have researcher Rachel. I don't know if she wants a picture in this video. I will ask her, and if she doesn't, then here's a picture of something she enjoys. Or maybe it is Rachel's face. I, I don't know, who knows. We have researcher Rachel, she's great. We have 
Oh, do you think Hattie will want to be in this bit? I don't know, I'll, I'll ask Hattie again. And then this is Hattie. She helps us just like run as a business. So yeah, that's that's the team. I don't know if Hattie will want to be in the vid, but yeah, that's that's the gang right now. We're hiring another researcher at the moment. We, we like, um, yeah, we're hiring another researcher at the moment. I don't know, I think I was gonna try and mansplain that to you, but like, you know what that means. Um, yeah, and that's the team right now. I don't know if we're gonna, other than a researcher, I don't know how we're gonna expand when, in what way, but yeah, as we do expand, I will I will keep you updated. That's the gang. What was I talking about before that, by the way? <laughs> um, yeah, I started doing true crime vids. I did the Anthonette KD tour vid. Yeah, I started out just doing like missing persons cases because that was kind of what true crime YouTube was at the time. People weren't really doing solved cases. Not to sound like a hipster, but I think I was like one of the first people to start doing solved cases. Because I remember I used to get quite a bit of flack for that in the beginning. Because true crime YouTube, like I said, was mostly like missing persons cases, which are really, really useful to put out there if the information's all correct. Because it helps get that person's face out there. It helps, it helps broaden the search, doesn't it? Of course. So people were fans of true crime YouTube at first uh, because of that. Yeah, and then I started doing a couple of solved cases here and there just because they they still really interest me. It's the psychology. Like I wanted to go into true crime to to read about the psychology of everything and not even just that, but like, I don't know. It's just fascinating, isn't it? Like there's a reason that we, we all watch it and it's a reason it's like Netflix's biggest category or whatever because it is morbidly really interesting yeah people weren't a big fan of solved videos in the beginning i remember i got a lot of con uh, a lot of comments being like what's the point in this like you're literally just just telling me a, a story of something that like we can't do anything about it you know what i mean um which i kind of understood at first because it seemed like the genre was just missing persons cases. I wasn't the first to person to do solve cases by any means, not saying that, but that's kind of what I got, like that's what I got my initial audience from, like my first few hundred K. And still now, I literally still do only solved cases pretty much. Um, but yeah, that's kind of what got me the audience, I, I think, because my content was quite different to the missing persons cases and like unsolved mysteries were really big back then. Um, but my videos had like a conclusion at the end. They had a resolution, you got answers. And I think people really liked to know that justice had been served. You know, you, you hear the story of this really awful, brutal case and it makes you really, really sad. And then at the end you hear that the person that committed the crime is locked away in prison for the rest of forever. And it feels like, okay, like it's, you're still really sad about the story that you've just watched, but at least you know, at least there's resolve. Whereas with the unsolved mysteries before that, that was one thing that I could never really like. I mean, it, it sounds really like ugh, to say because these are real stories, but listening to like unsolved mysteries would would plague my brain for a while. I had to stop doing it because I am a worrier. I'm a really anxious person. So like hearing about these like women that were like murdered, their bodies were found and then their killers were never, never found. Like that me up. Like that genuinely seriously me up because why is that person still out there? That's so scary. That is literally so scary to me that I had to stop watching like unsolved crime. Um, which again is why I think I got so into solved crime because I wasn't giving myself nightmares every time. Oh my God, Adam's outside. Oh my God, go away, get a life. Oh, love you. Should we talk about music? My favorite music at the moment. I have been loving girl rock. I literally have a playlist on Spotify that's just called girl rock and it's just like loads of female musicians. I am obsessed with Maggie Lindman. There is something about girl rock stars that just feeds my soul. I'm like, yes, feminine rage. Ooh, ooh that, that tickled me a little bit. I'm gonna be paying for that tomorrow when I wake up with no voice. Oh, hello. Oh, gang, I'm really struggling to actually do my makeup and talk and move my hands and concentrate on my words at the same time. So, you know, if I ever have a podcast, maybe let's just focus on one thing at once. Eh? You're definitely, what? What? 
Oh, I thought my phone had just been unlocked on the side the whole time. I was like, well, that's just going to run down the battery. That's Oh, my mum does that all the time. That is my main gripe with my mother. Angela, I love you to the moon and back, but lock your damn phone. This woman will just like come off the phone. She Sometimes she don't even put the phone down on people. She just says bye and then puts her phone down on the table and then just goes about a day. And I'm like, what? What? To me that feels so alien, but she does it all the time and I'm like, mum, I'm so scared that like, because she butt dials people all the time because of this, because her phone's just always open in a pocket. I'm like, mum, you, you you give me the fear. Like you could, that, that phone could be doing anything in your bag. You could be sending a million pounds to like your hairdresser through your mobile banking app and you would have no idea. Well, you would when you saw the million pounds come out of your bank account, wouldn't you? Yeah. You would hope, you would hope you'd notice that. You'd hope you'd get like a call from your bank going, are you sure? Like, are you actually sure you want to do that? Because that seems a bit unnecessary. Like, what haircut costs a million squids? Oh my God, what do you think the most expensive haircut anyone has ever had is? I wonder who, ooh, we could probably Google that. I'm not gonna do it because I have to keep you entertained. I can't just go silent on my phone for two minutes. This is when I would need a co-host. You entertain while I Google. Oh, I'm such a Googler. I am such a Googler. Like if we're out like at a meal or at a bar or something and we're just having a conversation, I'm that girl that's like, oh my God, I'm gonna get my phone out and check it. I'm like, oh my God, I wonder what his middle name is. I'm gonna check. Like, girl, shut up. I once did it and I found out. Do you wanna know what, oh my God, this is the biggest tea I have ever found. It's about Peppa Pig. It's Peppa Pig tea. So, so apparently there's three babies. There's Peppa Pig and then there's George. Who, by the way, why ain't he George Pig? He's just George. It's Mummy Pig, Daddy Pig, Peppa Pig, and George. So, oh, maybe he's not part of the same family. Oh my God. So yeah, this takes me back to my Peppa Pig tea that I have. I found out that Mummy Pig had an affair on Daddy Pig, and that's how they had Maya Pig, who is the third youngest kid. She's like a baby. She's like the Maggie of the Simpsons, which I didn't know she existed. But then I found out that Mummy Pig had an affair with Daddy Pig. I don't know why that's part of the law, the Peppa Pig law, but it is. It's not, well, it's on Google. And I mean, don't believe everything you see on Google. I need to do my makeup. I wonder how stressed the comments are gonna be on this vid. People being like, just fucking finish one story, will you, before you go on to the next. This is what people in my real life have to deal with. Can you see what this guy meant at the convention when he was like, you need a podcast because you can just chat beans for ages. Yeah, the freaking hell I can. That's like my superpower is like just, Oh my God, oh my God, I never burp. And I didn't even like, I, well, no, I did feel it coming, which is really odd. So I don't know why I let it out considering I am filming. Oh, oh, well now I've embarrassed myself a bit. Can we pretend that didn't happen? Anyway, moving on, what should we talk about now? Anyone got any topics they want to discuss? Um, well, hmm, what, what's, what's on my mind? Adam? Hi, give me something to talk about. Oh my God, what tattoos are we getting next? Oh yeah. Okay, I'm gonna get, oh I can't, can I? T no, what cause I wanna post the TikTok first. Mm. You'll find out if you follow me on TikTok. <laughs> I made a spam TikTok called Usual Disclaimer and I'm literally addicted to it. I'm literally a dick. Yeah, you're addicted. I'm addicted to it. <laughs> I'm addicted to, to it. it. You're, um, um, I want Studio Ghibli, Ghibli ones. That's what I want. Oh, so cute. So, that's my best friend, Adam. That's, oh, I showed you him earlier. I showed you him. Do you remember when we showed you that picture? Do you remember? Do you remember when I got that picture out earlier? Anyway, what's your favourite Ed Sheeran song? I know that's quite a, 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 it is quite niche for me and my friends because all my friends are gay and all my friends are gay. Push me to the... Theresa May, who <laughs> fucking what? What? Oh, get the worms out of your brain ASAP, Eleanor Neal. <gasps> you know what I need to get out? My gallstones. I've still got gallstones. What are we actually gonna do about that? Like, what am I actually? I really do need to have the operation. Like, obviously, like, obviously. But that's so long. And I react really badly to anesthetic. What have I done to my, oh my God, girls, girls, girls. I just can't say no. Okay, Conor Maynard. He, okay, those songs were bangers, by the way. What was his other one? 
Houston, I think we got a problem. Oh, is that the same song? I don't know. I got really, really ill with anesthetic, so I actively avoid having operations and surgeries and stuff, even though there's a few that I want. Okay, let's talk about my weight loss, shall we? That's something I don't talk about online because I think it's such a I am so so scared of like accidentally triggering people with anything I say even though I know that I am healthy and I've done everything healthy I don't think I will ever tell like my process online because I know how easily triggered I especially used to be as a teenager about food things and even watching I don't, I don't know. It's just not something that I really wish to talk about online. It's something that we don't really need to talk about. It's something that I'll acknowledge. We all know I've, like, if you watch one of my old videos and one of my new videos, you can tell I've lost a lot of weight and I'm healthy and I'm happy and I'm living life. Um, always have been living life, to be fair, but I'm just healthier and happier now. Um, what was I, where was I going with that? Oh, but with major weight loss, like mine, you are left with a lot of loose skin that I... Um, I never used to be that um, self-conscious of. I've had it all for about like a year now um, and I never used to be that self-conscious of it but for some reason the past couple of months I've been like okay this is something that I that is like limiting um, my quality of life you know like I think I would just be a bit happier if I didn't have bingo wings. Do you want me to... Oh my god there's my bingo wings. But wear girly so I can I can be vulnerable with you and show you my bingo wings. Um, but yeah, there's like objectively, I really don't like I don't care. Um, so I'm thinking about getting rid of the bingo wings. Um, there's a couple of surgeries that I might potentially get because I have a lot of loose skin, like a lot. Uh, and I, I, it feel oh god, it feels a bit weird to talk about online. But it's literally just my human body. It's the way that my human body has naturally reacted to major weight loss. So like, what is there to be embarrassed about? Like, it happens to most people that lose that much weight. And I would rather have lost the weight and been healthy and happy and have loose skin than um, than before be like, I was, I was so miserable. And I think I have put it down to like my insecurities about my weight because now that that's been alleviated, I'm suddenly the happiest, most confident person I've ever been. You can keep this in, basically gang, you, welcome back. I just started talking about uh, the loose skin removal surgeries that I wanted and then I realized halfway through that that could actually be really triggering. So um, me and Jake have just, me and Jake, but just Jake, has just cut about a lot of what I was just saying. Uh, so what should we talk about now? Um, what should we talk about? I don't know. Let me do my nose contour. Let me do my nose contour and then I'll, like, right, and then we'll, right, come on, pause the podcast. Pause, pause the pod, pod the pod. How sad is it that the dog from Come Outside has died? I find it, you know what? It's sad when any animal dies, but a famous animal? A childhood famous animal? No, you've got me crying. You got me crying in the club, because your dog's got me fucked up. Oh my God, Ellie, that was visceral. Oh my God, gang, do you recognize this? Have I already said this in one of the previous videos? I don't know. This tree house is the same one that Zoella and Alfie stayed in, in the, in the vlog. Jake put a, the vlog. This was like one of my comfort videos when I was young. So I had to book a stay at the exact same place because that's actually really stalkery, isn't it? No, because I knew they weren't going to be here. I didn't No, I think that's fine. That's fine to want to book something because you've seen it on social media. What's your favorite song at the moment? That's one question I love to ask people because I'm so into music, it's silly. Which like, I know everyone's like into music. That is a stupid thing to say because everyone is into music. Where's Adam's little puff thing? Oh, it's there. Look, Adam got this off TikTok shop the other day and it's like, it's really good. It's really, really good. No, but <laughs> I know everyone says they're into music, but I'm like really into music, you know, like more than like you wouldn't understand, you know? But that's how I genuinely feel. Like I know that's so cringe, but like that's how I genuinely feel. Like I'm so, like I will, like people sit there on a night and watch Netflix or whatever. 
I sit there on a night and just rearrange my Spotify playlists. It's, that's really sad though, isn't it? That, get some friends, get some hobbies and interests, please. I'm just, I just really like music and talking about music. What's my favorite song at the moment? Let me, let me have a think. I really like, um, I really like uh, Concrete by Lovejoy. That's my current favorite Lovejoy song. My favorite of all time is Sex Sells. Um, what else do I like at the moment? My friend Danora has a new song out called Living Room and that's great. Do I know any Australians? Do, do I know many people from many different places? I think so many of my friends are just English, which is actually just a bit peak in it. Like, that's a, like actually like, I should make some more interesting mates. Cause you can find English people chuffing anywhere, you can't you? So this is me checking if my, <laughs> checking if I'm like actually properly dry in the concealer areas. Cause oh my God, gang, I'm getting some proper wrinkles at the moment. And I'm not gonna lie, Again, I don't want to be triggering, but it's making me quite insecure. Um, one of my biggest like fears, oh, this is actually gonna sound so dickish if you're older than me, but one of my biggest fears is aging. And like, I don't, I don't know why, I couldn't tell you why. I mean, obvious, for obvious reasons that like you don't wanna die. And it's like a, a physical like m way to monitor how old you are is seeing wrinkles on your face every day in the mirror. You know, like th these are my first wrinkles and I know you can barely see them. I get like quite a few under this eye sometimes. Um, but like sometimes I see them in the mirror and I'm like, oh, like that sounded like the Minecraft noise, didn't it? The Minecraft noise. Me when I've literally seen like one Tommy in a video. Um, what about that dream guy, by the way? Anyway, no, I'm not going to talk about that. Um, I'm not going to talk about dream. Um, 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 um. What was I saying? Yeah, the wrinkle on my eye. Um, I don't know. I don't know, man. I know it's literally the tiniest wrinkle, but it makes me feel like quite sad. And, oh, I'm sorry. I'm literally so sorry if you've got more wrinkles than me, because I bet that sounds so fucking annoying. But um, yeah, it's just like, it's getting me down a little bit. Oh my God, you know what I kind of want? I want tear trough filler. I think, but then I'm being silly because, okay, so the only thing I've like had done is lip filler. Um, and I don't want to get anything else because I think lip filler is relatively common these days, isn't it? I think a lot of people have it. And uh, I don't know, I just don't think it's, am I allowed to say this that I don't think it's that big of a deal? I don't know, like obviously it's a really big decision to make. You you are physically modifying your, your body and your appearance and only do it if you're so certain that you want to and be aware of the the effects that it can have on like your mental state. So I, I don't know, I imagine it's quite like triggering for body dysmorphia and stuff. But all that being said, it's just making your lips a bit bigger, isn't it? That's what lip liner does as well. Like I've literally been doing it for years with lip liner. I've promised my mum I won't go any further with my lips or like with anything else because she's always hated lip filler. Which like, I don't know, my mum's quite like a, she, she'll, she doesn't care what you look like or what you're wearing or anything. She loves you no matter what. But the one thing that she gets a little bit sassy about is lip filler. Like sometimes she'll be like, oh my God. Like, like we'll be watching TV and she'll be like, she looks a bit like a duck, don't you think? And I'm like, mommy. Uh, but yeah, like a bit. So yeah, that's the, like when I first, I didn't tell my mom I was getting lip filler before I got it because I knew she would freaking freak out. That's like telling her that I'm like pregnant. Like I, I thought I could be in more trouble telling her I had lip filler than if I went to her and said, mom, I am now addicted to class A's. You know what I mean? Oh my God, am I allowed to say that? Yeah, I am. I'm not addicted, to, I'm obviously not. I'm obviously not. But like, I genuinely think she would be more mad at me for getting lip filler than, no, she wouldn't. No, she wouldn't, like, no, she wouldn't. But yeah, I'm, I promised my mom that I wouldn't get any more because she is scared that I'm gonna go home one day like, you're right. You know what I realised the other day? I get little bunny teeth when I smile sometimes. Sometimes I don't fully open my mouth when I smile, which is a bit silly. Don't know why I do that. But I smile like this. Wait, how do I do it? What's them bunny teeth for? I, I don't know, it's just silly. And I thought I'd mention it. Cause like I've known I've done it for a while. But then I took a picture of myself the other like the other day and I was outside and it was quite dark outside so I, I was quite pronounced and my bunny teeth. Oh my god girl, you've never seen honkers like it. 
Honkers, that's a word you use for boobs. What else could I talk about? I might talk about like one more thing and then like shut the camera off because honestly, you guys are slowing me down with my makeup. I, like, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry to say it. I know you guys, and like, come on. I'm having a good time as well. I'm having a great time. But I've got dinner reservations and I'm being so I think slow because I'm chatting your ear off. So, um, okay, one last question. What should we talk about? I'm trying to think like what's been like a, a most asked question in a Q, in Q and A's and stuff so then I can like answer something that you actually want to talk about. What, oh God, what do people ask me often? Oh man, oh God. Oh my God, oh my God, so me and my friend. <laughs> Me, when I interrupt myself saying, oh my God, to say, oh my God. Anyway, me and my friends. Uh, so there's like three of us that are like here on this holiday and we were deciding who in the friends cast we were and we were gonna give each other two people each because there's six friends and three of us. So we were gonna be two people. I'm Phoebe and Joey. Of course I am, of course I'm Phoebe and Joey. Uh, Adam is Rachel and Chandler and 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 Jake is the gallows. And 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 why did I glitch then? Oh my god, I'm gonna see myself in like a clone conspiracy theory video. Ellen O'Neill, clone proof. She glitches in podcast vid. As if anyone would care if they found out I was a clone or like a robot, by the way. I think if that ever came out like in the news, like true crime YouTuber Ellen O'Neill, turns out she's a drone this whole time, people would be like, weird, but that like, alright. <laughs> you know, that, that probably doesn't affect your life that much if I'm a drone or like a robot or something. And on that note, I'm gonna go, <laughs> where can I go? Um, I'm not a drone, I'm not a robot. I'm not, you cut me and I'll bleed. And I'll also cry, cause that'd be really mean and it'd probably hurt a bit. So don't do it. And don't do drugs. I'll see you in the next one. Love you, bye.